People have been moving into the country Ghana both in person and virtually over the past couple of years due to government initiatives such as the Year of the Return and Beyond the Return. But even more so in the last one year that just passed, 2022. A company, Sukasa, likes to think that this is due to its extremely lucrative real estate investment opportunity and they have the proof to back their claims. Amidst this overwhelmingly warm reception of the general public, there are others who are a bit more pessimistic and have some concerns. Sukasa, at the highest level, has decided to use this platform to address all growing concerns and questions. This is going to be the first of many as the CEO takes questions from its existing clients, potential clients, and the general public on a monthly basis. This is what Sukasa calls its top 20 questions and concerns being addressed by the CEO. Welcome to 20 Questions with Sukasa. Mr. Granton, first of all, people would like to know why has phase one taking so long? It commenced in January 22 and is now completed. Right. Um, first, I'd like to say a happy new year to all of uh, our clients, cherished clients, customers and um, the general public. And uh, to also say, you know, last year 2022 has been by all means a very successful year for Sukasa and we owe it to uh, the clients and the general public looking at the warm reception that we have had. Um, it's, it's been great and uh, to an extent overwhelming um, for the entire staff. Um, so on behalf of the entire uh, company, uh, entire staff, general staff and management, I'd like to say thank you and uh, a happy new year. Um, first, uh, to answer that question, what is um, you know, a, a misconception, a great misconception here is most people don't understand that phase one is much different from phase two and phase three. Um, we didn't sell phase one like we did with phase two and phase three. Phase three, 55 units, was sold in under 72 hours. Um, phase one took months to sell. Now, when Sukasa comes out and says, um, when you, you make a payment, you get a home in uh, four, week, four months, not four weeks, 16 weeks. 16 weeks of the time that you, you made the payment, not the time that we started the, the whole community. Phase one started with 11 units. Currently, it's at 17 units. That is uh, a little proof there showing that phase one we started with 11 units and even those first 11 units did not all sell at the same time. It took a while. So we're talking about certain clients came at different times, different timelines. Has it delayed? Yes, absolutely. It has delayed. But not as much as people think because there's, there are a lot of people out there saying, oh, it started um, on the, you know, in January, January 2022 and it took a year to complete, um, but that's not the, that's not the case. Uh, it, it has delayed slightly, but not as much as you know a whole year, for instance. You know, and uh, well, at least good good enough right now. Uh, phase one is going to be handed over in uh, about a week. We're we're about ninety five percent done. Um, so you know, and I think that people who bought in phase one would come to realize that it was worth the wait. Uh, not to say that the, the delay uh, is, is justified, but at least you know what they get, the final product is, is worth, worth uh, the wait. And so that's, that's the answer to that question. Phase one didn't delay as much as people think it has. Well, let's talk about AIMENSA. When will that start? AIMENSA is um, currently, we're doing, um, we're setting up the, the entire site. Um, AIMENSA should start in a, a week. So by the time that this video should air, um, Ayimensa would have already begun. All right, good. Great news. Yeah. What about phase three? Where can we ex expect that? Ayimensa and phase start? three, they're, they're, they're on the same timeline. Mm -hmm. Ayimensa, phase three, they're starting at the same time. Um, now, there might be people asking, you know, around this question, same thing. Um, did phase three actually start in December as we had communicated? or? Uh, um, you know, th things like that. And no, it did not start in December, as we had said it will. But 
that's not because we couldn't have started in December. That's because we decided not to. Why did we decide not to? Um, we listened, just as we listened to our clients and the general public, we listened to our staff as well, the construction workers. Um, it had been said and everyone had agreed you know, to it that you know, we were going to start in December. But come the time, you know, and this is Ghana, people like they love their Christmas. And so, you know, we could have had them start, but, you know, they, they made it clear that, you know, they would rather not work, you know, through, through the Christmas. And we just wanted to give them that time to, you know, be able to uh, celebrate the festive season. And that's the reason why we didn't start, not because we couldn't have started. And uh, right now, if you, if you go phase three, um, would be starting in a week, just as I said, you know, by the time that this would air, Phase three and the Yemen, so I would both start, have started at that time. Mm. Right. So you, you talked about the layouts a little bit earlier. Uh, when will the layout for both Ayman and Phase three be delivered for selection? Layout is already delivered. Okay. Uh, this is also another misconception, and uh, I'd like to explain something to uh, clients mainly and the general public. Phase two. Um, was sold out in less than 72 hours and we're very grateful. But it took more than two months to have clients select their units and this is 45 units. In phase three we're talking hundreds of units, 816 units to be specific. Now the, the, the system that we were using which was the manual system is just not as good as it, we'd like it to be. Um, reason for that is, you know, clients are busy, you know, d during weekdays, they're at work. Uh, some people, even if they're not busy, when, they, when we get in touch with them and we ask them to select a unit, what happens is they want to speak to their spouse, they want to speak to a friend, show them the layout, uh, you know, where do we select our, our unit at. It takes time for clients to get back to us. Now, we have a policy that says, we're going to have to serve on a first uh, come first serve basis. Now that means that if you bought your your home uh, um, uh, before I did, or made the initial payment, and we're not even talking about the final payment, we're talking about the initial payment, whether it was a re reservation fee or an initial uh, deposit. Whenever you made that payment, we would have to serve you first. So when we get in touch with you, we're, we're committed to each one client. So we're trying to get in touch with Amelia and say, Amelia, please, you know, select your unit before we move on to the next person. And Amelia might take uh, a day. Now, if we're talking 800 uh, clients and e each person is taking half a day even, that's two years easy, over, over two years. And, and uh, you know, I, I just mentioned what happened with phase two, which was just uh, tens of clients, 45 clients, and it took over two months to do it. So it has already started. The layout is, is out as we speak, and that process has begun. But we're looking at finding ways, which we have found ways, but then we, we have to depend on the technical people as well. We're trying to use technology to solve this problem, where clients can go onto their, their dashboard and then select a unit in real time. You know, and then we, we open it up that way so we can get it rolled out faster. Um, just because uh, uh, the, the layout hasn't gone to some other clients doesn't mean it's not out, it's out. But it just hasn't gone to, you know, the, the one that has, it came after, you know, and that's, that's what we're dealing with. But the layout is, is already out, both uh, for Ayi uh, Mensa and for Phase 3. All right, thank you for the clarification. And uh, let's talk social amenities. What kind of social amenities are there within the Ogranson communities? Depends. Okay. Um, phase one, unfortunately, doesn't have any uh, amenities. And um, the, the residents there knew that right from the beginning. We didn't say anything that we didn't deliver. Um, phase two has some amenities. Phase two has a, a clubhouse, if you'd call it that. Um, a pool area, it has a, a mini mart, it has a, a pharmacy. Those uh, are the four different amenities that are going to be uh, in, in the community of phase two. Um, for phase three, it's going to be much more. 
uh, phase three, we have a, a library in there. We have a drive-through cinema. Um, we have a couple of clubhouses, I think about six of them. Um, we have, uh, and all these clubhouses come with uh, pools. So it's uh, public pools for the residents. Mm. Uh, we have a playground for kids. Uh, um, we have a mall in there. Uh, I, I don't like to call it a mall, but you know it, it is what it is. Mm. We have we have that in there, um, uh, and we have a couple of restaurants as well, mm. you know. And even in the, the drive-through cinema, we're going to have uh, um, uh, restaurants uh, there as well, you know, serving the people uh, that are, are are there to to watch movies, you know, and then popcorn stands and things like that. Uh, we're gonna have KFCs. We're gonna have fast food. Uh, 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 joints in there. So that's that's uh, the amenities that we have in, in phase three. I've, I've always said, you know, as we go, we're, we're always going to make the next, uh, you know, development better than, than the previous one. Uh, people that came in earlier, you know, sometimes feel like it's a bit uh, unfortunate or uh, unfair. So what we have done is residents of the other communities that came up earlier still have access to these amenities, just like residents within mm. those communities, you know. So um, that's the answer to that question. Now, the maintenance culture in these parts are usually not very great. So people want to know, will Sukasa be managing these communities and these social amenities that you talked about? And if so, what is the expected service charge, if any? Um, yes. First question, the first part of the question, yes, Sukasa would be managing these communities. Um, in, in some cases, for instance, with cleaning, we might, we might uh, be partnering with uh, uh, cleaning services, other companies that offer cleaning services. But Sukasa would be uh, directly uh, in bed with these companies and then making sure that these communities are managed the right way. Um, as, as to uh, uh, the second part of the question, the service charges, we cannot say what it's going to be uh, today, uh, tomorrow. Today, it stands at about uh, $100 per month, right? Um, but it could change. Just as everything changes, uh, the economy goes where it goes. And when, when it goes that way, we're going to have to you know, but all of these things are in the uh, HOA rules and regulations. You know, so residents have this this document that says this is how we're going to manage. This is going to be some form of like a, a constitution for the community mm -hmm. to 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 guide us, so we don't wake up one day and decide to do anything that we just uh, felt like doing. There are going to be rules and regulations that guide not just the company, but residents as well. You know. And uh, so that's as far as uh, 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 service charges are concerned and management. Uh, when I say Sukasa would be managing the communities, though, the Ogranson Communities is a different company, right? So Sukasa, yes, is, and the Ogranson Communities is, uh, they're, they're, you know, sister companies or brother companies, you know. But um, after the community is done, Sukasa would kind of take a back seat you know, uh, go on to other communities and we would keep building. But then the, the company or grants and communities would be the one that's directly managing these uh, communities that we're building. What about prices? Can we expect any changes in prices due to the current economic situation? Um, I think that in, in the past couple months we have faced as a, a country and, um, and a world the hardest uh, economic time in, in a while. Our prices didn't change per se, and that's another misconception. People thought that we dropped our prices. So, it, you know, it seemed crazy to people mm -hmm. that when everyone was increasing prices, we were dropping prices. We did not drop our prices. What happened was we sell in CDs. The CD to dollar uh, exchange did what it did. We all saw exactly what happened. Uh, at the time where we said five, uh, 560,000 CDs, um, we were talking at, of a rate of about eight, eight uh, CDs to a dollar. When the, the, the rate increased and then we, we went to uh, 14 and 13 and 12 and things like that, 
that naturally made the, the dollar equivalent drop. So we did not drop our prices. Um, I'm saying this to say that even if we're, we're, we're going to change uh, prices, we're always going to be committed to making these homes accessible to the majority of people. And that's why we maintained our prices, even when we had you know, the worst time ever. If the prices change, we will always communicate. But I cannot say right now whether the prices will change or not, because we don't know what's going to happen in the next couple months or year. You know, in, in this new year that we just uh, came in, we, we don't know. So we can't, I can't answer that definitely. Right, so the prices didn't drop, but you did manage to maintain your prices. How did Sukasa do this? I um, recorded a, a, a video a couple months ago, and um, that video was mainly not addressing clients like we're doing today. It was mainly in, addressing the industry uh, stakeholders and uh, industry players. Um, the way that we maintained prices is, is the same way that other companies out there can maintain prices and they do maintain prices as far as their cost of build. Um, the, the cost on the general public is what increases in, in many cases. Now I'm saying this uh, again being very careful because I'm aware that there are a lot of small companies out there uh, and Sukasa is one of them actually. We're, we're a small sized uh, to, to, you know, to middle sized company. But there are companies that are smaller that cannot afford to, for instance, stockpile, buy uh, raw material in, in bulk, um, have uh, these kinds of uh, corporate uh, uh, transactions and deals with uh, cement uh, uh, manufacturers. Uh, importers of uh, whatever you, you might be using in the finish and tiling, uh, plasterboards, painting, whatever it is that you're going to be using in your building. They might not be in a position to do that, but for the, for the bigger companies, they, they're in a position to do that and they, they do that. All we did is not to um, try and, and get as much profit. That's what we did. We just allowed the clients, the general public, to be able to uh, benefit from our position. Being able to stockpile, for instance. Being able to buy land in, in uh, large uh, quantity, um, if that's the, the right way to put it. Uh, because if you were going to buy an acre of, of land versus 100 acres, you might pay double the price that I'd pay for, pay for if I was buying 100 acres. And we're allowing clients to see these benefits, you know, of being able to buy in, in this way. And that's, that's the answer. People have wanted, you know, I've, I've had many, many different um, industry players, but mostly the smaller ones come and say, you know, how do you do it? You know, would, would want to be able to, but it's, it's not, uh, there's no secret recipe. That's my point. There is no secret recipe. It's, Again, exactly as I've already said, there are a few other things that I cannot go into uh, because some of these things are technical, but um, th the main thing is really with, with material. You can also see this with um, when you go to our development. You have uh, uh, construction workers who are sacrificing. So CASA, as we say, building on trust, it's built on sacrifice, on a lot of sacrifice. You know, we're having our construction workers getting paid below what their uh, colleagues are getting paid elsewhere. Why? Because we're, we're sa saying to them, this is a good course. You know, everyone has to give something. Everyone has to sacrifice something to make homes affordable. So we're not saying that they're not getting anything. They are getting paid, but it's not, it's not the same as, you know, what another mason or another uh, laborer out there would be getting paid and, and they're understanding it and they're going with us so they're making sacrifices as well. So you know there are a number of things that allow us to be able to do this. So tell us uh, what does the units come furnished with? Each unit comes with a um, fully fitted kitchen, um, kitchen cabinets, no appliances. 
Um, it comes with uh, wardrobes in them. It comes with uh, a water tank for storage. Um, the regular, you know, uh, um, lighting is, is going to be in there. Um, it's not furnished. These these homes are not furnished. However, we we give uh, clients the opportunity to have us buy some of these appliances uh, uh, for them because we have uh, partnerships with some of these uh, sellers of uh, appliances. Uh, so we're able to get them at better rates. So whether it's uh, refrigerators or uh, cookers or whatever, ACs, we can, we can buy them and install them in the homes for them. But the homes do not come with all these things in, installed. However, for our uh, four bedroom premium, we have a premium four bedroom. The, the products are five uh, products. We have a three bedroom, uh, three bedroom extended, a four bedroom, a four bedroom extended, and a premium one. With our four bedroom uh, premium, it comes with all these appliances. AC is all, all fitted in there. Um, it has uh, uh, cookers, uh, extractors, you know, anything that you, you could think about, you know, that comes basic with a, a home as far as uh, electrical appliances are concerned. It has those and it has a, a pool as well. It has much more. I mean, uh, the, the name says it, you know, premium. So we, we try to make sure that it has everything that, you know, you might need uh, basic, mm. basic stuff that you might need. And what about roads? What are the plans for roads inside and outside All the of our roads are going to be done within the community. Um, phase one, you can see that already done. Mm. Um, like I said, phase one is 95% done. Mm. So uh, phase two is going to follow suit. Phase three, same thing. Um, this question usually comes from uh, people wanting to know what about the roads outside of the community. Outside of the community, in phase one, um, as of two days ago, we went and uh, made the road a little bit more mutterable, right? We're always going to try and do that. Phase two uh, uh, and phase three, good enough. The roads are currently under construction. And people that have been out there would, would see this already. Uh, and it's, it's, it's far in. It's about 50% in or maybe even 60% in. Um, but naturally, uh, 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 the, the roads outside of our community, that's not... I don't want to say that's not our responsibility, but you know we we can't do those. Uh, hopefully, in time, Sukasa would be in a position, you know, where we'd, we'd have uh, big guns and then be able to say, you know, we're we're going to do all these roads uh, that lead to our communities. But currently, we're not in that position. Um, but what we do is we try to make these roads uh, as as multiple as possible, and also in the selection of the lands where we're going to build, we try to. Uh, select lands, even though in developing areas, in areas that we know that uh, there are plans to get these roads done within the, uh, the next uh, year or, or so. And that's what you're seeing with uh, both phase two and phase three. Ayimensa would also follow suit uh, soon enough, mm. for sure of that. All right. When it comes to pricing, what exchange rates does Sukasa use for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora? Um, we don't determine the rates when people want to make a purchase. The prevailing rate at the time of purchase is what we use. So whatever uh, Bank of Ghana, you know, uh, the commercial bank says the rate is, that's what is, is going to be used. And, and rates are, you know, global, a global thing. So if you're making a purchase from New York or you're making a purchase from London or Paris, wherever you're making a purchase from, the banks determine this. So we don't, we don't, you know, get involved uh, with, with, with that at all. Okay. So if the rates go well, it goes well for all of us. If uh, the exchange rate doesn't go too well, it's unfortunate, but we'll still have to charge forward. So that's, mm. that's that. And what if a client decides to call for a refund? Is there a deduction or penalty? Uh, this is a, a key question. Um, we have said over and over again, and it's, it's good that we're, we're doing this, you know, um, so that at least this video can be out there and, and people can always refer to it and get the answers to some of these questions. Sukasa is, if not the only, one of the few 
companies that has this policy in place. And that the policy I'm talking about is a 100% cashback guarantee. Now, we've had uh, partners even say, no, you know, if a client is going to uh, call for a refund, there should be, you know, parameters set that says, you know, for depending on the reason, there's going to be a deduction or whatever. So Casa is a prideful company. We believe in what we're doing here. We think that the product that we're given, we put a lot of personal in there. So we don't want to keep anyone in that does not want to be in this relationship with us. We want people to feel comfortable to come in with us and to leave when they will. And that's why in our contract, it says it right there in the contract, a 100% cashback guarantee without deductions for whatever reason, at any time. You know, uh, uh, there sh it shouldn't be that, oh, because uh, whatever the reason is, if a, a client had some financial constraints, they could, you know, request a refund. If they, there was a delay on our side, if there was some form of unprofessionalism on our side, someone said something that, but we would always, and we have always done that, when there is a refund request, to speak to the person. Because in most cases, uh, people don't just come to buy a home just to you know, request a refund um, two months down the line or a month down the line. They, they came to buy because they wanted to buy. So if a person wants a refund, there, there must be something wrong. And we go in to speak to them to, to try and understand. Even if they were still going to pull out, we still want to understand so that we can make the, the service better or whatever it is that caused that uh, uh, refund request, we can try and you know solve it as we go along. So yes, anyone can always uh, request a refund at no cost. Um, there is not going to be any deductions as is the norm out there in the industry. You know, and um, I think it's a it's a great policy um, that is supposed to build confidence. I think that the, the, the public has a good amount of confidence in Sukasa. There are a few uh, you know, hitches here and there, but I think that we have uh, a lot of confidence of, of the public. So for those whose confidence encourages them to make a purchase, um, what documents can they expect to receive uh, when the units are handed over? By standard, they're going to have a, a, an indenture deed of conveyance. Um, but uh, this question again, you know, a lot of people are asking because they want to know about land titles. So I'd, I'd rather just speak about that. The land title process is we or no other real estate company controls the system that, you know, government has, has set. Land title process takes a while, even for Sukasa. When we buy land, it is going to take us anywhere between uh, six months to a year, could be, could be more in some cases, to get the, the land title to come out. But at least uh, 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 an indenture is proof of purchase. And then uh, 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 an SPA, which is a sales purchase agreement, which is what we give to clients. So there are these two key documents, a sales purchase agreement and an, ind an indenture. After that, the, the, the land title uh, uh, process has a, a little extra fee that clients would have to pay. This does not come as part of the purchase of the home. And then Sukasa will you know, go through the process on behalf of the client so that the client uh, or the resident can have their, their uh, 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 land or, or property titled in their name. But in most cases, it might happen that we would hand over the home even before this land title is, is, is out and ready because of how, how much time it takes. And the, the process is, is the process and we'd, we'd rather go through the process the right way to get it out, you know. So at least you're going to have um, an indenture and an, an SPA, mm -hmm. sales purchase agreement. All right. Mr. Granson, why have receipts for payments been delayed? Um, it's, it's one thing to call it a, a delay, and, um, but I understand why people feel like it's uh, delayed. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, 
what we call delays are not actual delays. The fact that you made a payment um, doesn't mean we're going to be able to issue a receipt to you today unless it was cash. Right then, then you know, we received the money right here. We made, we made a receipt to you. But we're talking about bank transactions and we're talking about different types of transactions. We're having uh, wire transfers. We're having people do uh, uh, payments uh, through, uh, you know, uh, these uh, uh, mobile apps. And um, these applications, they have their own ways that they interact with the banking system. Already, the banking system has a, a way that they interact as well. Um, we're talking about people who have never made uh, a wire transfer of 50,000 USD, uh, 50,000 uh, pounds. Their banks are asking questions. We sometimes have to even, you know, get calls and things like that to clarify what the money is for, what the purpose is. There are people that are facing personal issues like that, you know. Uh, the banking system, again, just like uh, with registrations of lands and things like that, we don't control this. Until uh, funds have hit our account, and most of the time, people don't believe it or they don't understand that after a week, the money hasn't hit our accounts, but it is true. Sometimes it takes, and, and sometimes it'll take less than 24 hours, depending on the, the person in their bank and, you know, the intermediary bank and things like that. Some of these things are not technical, but it does happen. It's not, you know, too much to explain, but it does happen. And if anyone was going to, you know, speak to their banks and, or someone on a very personal note to explain some of these things to them, they would understand what I'm, I'm saying. You know, money coming in uh, from outside of, of, of Ghana into the country. Unfortunately, and, and I have to say this, but, you know, unfortunately, Ghana has been, you know, put in a certain box where, you know, funds coming in it sometimes can be scrutinized because of certain things that uh, have happened in the past. Uh, hopefully, moving forward, we're not going to have to deal with too much of that, but we're in that position. And so the banks sometimes have to ask too many qu questions, you know, 21 questions to find out. And then they sometimes hold this, this, uh, these funds before they release them. Until funds hit our account, we cannot issue a receipt. And this is uh, one of the, the number one reasons why uh, people might think that we're delaying uh, receipts, but most of the time we don't actually del delay these receipts. Once the funds hit our accounts, in about 24 hours, 48 hours maximum, we issue a receipt out. So um, I wouldn't want to say that the receipts are, are delayed, um, but and I, as I said in the beginning, this is what happens most of the time. Sometimes the fault is from us. Um, people are overwhelmed. We sold out in, you know, uh, 72 hours phase two and even went beyond because phase two got sold out but people still made payments and then they got rolled over to phase three. Sometimes the, the staff gets overwhelmed so there, there might be a delay there but that delay is not the kind of delay that we're, we're speaking about here. So you, you talked about uh, funds coming from outside of Ghana um, so can the diaspora or non guineans own uh, units within the grants and communities? Absolutely. Um, we've had um, a majority, actually, of our residents um, from outside of, of Ghana, uh, a huge majority. So yes, uh, the non guineans can own, uh, just as non guineans can own uh, homes every, anywhere in Ghana, mm -hmm. but of course uh, the law would, you know, have to be, be, be used when it comes to uh, land titles and, and things like that. Uh, the new Land Act, you know, has s certain restrictions on, uh, you know, things like uh, freehold lands and uh, the lease periods and things like that. non ghanaians I think, I'd have to check with legal, but I, I think that non ghanaians can have up to 50 years of, of a lease period. But yes, the, the simple answer to the question is yes, uh, non ghanaians can own homes in, in our communities as well, just as everyone. Okay. There are no uh, form of discrimination here. <laughs>
Uh, for those of the clients who have their own plot of land and uh, want Sukasa's design built on there, is this possible? And what's the procedure for this? Yes, uh, we, we've been doing this uh, from the beginning. That was what we used to be doing in, 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 in the initial stages before this project came along, your grants and communities project came along. So we're still doing that. Um, clients who have uh, their own land um, were, were able to come in and, and build uh, to to their specifications, or if they want us to build our uh, own uh, designs as in our grants and communities, we do that as well. Um, the process is, um, you know, straightforward. We're going to have to come see the land, see where it's located, look at the logistics. Um, we're going to have to do some so uh, soil testing. These things are standard, by the way. Um, you can't build uh, without these things. You have to, you know, do all of that so that we know exactly what we're going, going to be doing. You see. You know, these things are technical sometimes, uh, you know, how, how deep we're going to go with the foundation and all of that type of stuff. Um, but yes, the simple answer to that question is yes, we, we do offer that service. If you had uh, your land anywhere, um, we're, we're able to come build for you. Okay, good to know. Right. Uh, but there's still a lot of confusion about the number of units to be constructed in Phase 3. Can you clarify that here once and for all, what is the number for Phase 3? The number in phase three is 816 units. However, not all 816 units are going to be built at the same time. Um, we, we would if we could, we would love to, to be able to do that, but we can't, not now. Um, what's going to happen is that uh, the number of units there are going to be built in batches. So we're having up to about 200 uh, units per batch, and we're talking four batches. Uh, the entire community of Phase 3 is supposed to be completed by end of 2023, this year. Um, and uh, we're sure of this. Uh, I know that people think that maybe it's, you know, it's not possible looking at the number of uh, units and things like that. But that's why we believe in um, partnerships and we don't work alone. We work with uh, several different uh, other uh, smaller companies to make uh, uh, this uh, um, you know, a project come, come to light and, and get, get completed. Um, you can see that with uh, phase two. Uh, people have spoken as you have even as in the beginning, the first question I think was about phase, phase one's uh, completion time, how why it has delayed. 55 units in phase two, and it has gone much faster than 17 units went. That is, is proof of what I'm talking about. Uh, we're getting better as a company and what we do. So same thing with phase three, I can guarantee that it will go faster than phase two and phase one. Um, what I cannot guarantee is that there will be no delays. And uh, this might be um, not received uh, the best, but I'd rather put it out there. Because you see, uh, and there was one time, you know, I, I heard uh, on our virtual uh, presentations, we do this every, uh, twice, twice every month. And I heard there was, there was a client saying, you know, uh, oh, Africans are never, you know, on time and uh, we don't, we don't uh, 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 manage our time properly and, uh, you know, we delay everything and things like that. But I can give you 101 projects outside of Africa that got delayed, not to justify delays, not to say that delays are okay, no. But things happen. This is uh, construction, and not just construction, everything else. Things do happen. Will we absolutely deliver? 100%, that I can guarantee. But we cannot guarantee that there will absolutely be no uh, uh, delays. You see, what we're doing is, is unlike, to be very honest, uh, not just to blow our own horns, but it's unlike any other project going on currently in the country, in the nation. What does that mean? It means that the people that are having to build, the people we're having to work with, are not used to working in the way that we need people to work. Um, does it mean that we should go back to how they've been working? No. It means that over time, we're going to get people get with a, with a plan. Gradually, we're training people, 
in the office and on, on sites, you know, in the construction. People are being trained to, to work differently than they have been, you know, used to. Uh, and, and, you know, this, this is gonna, you know, you, you're not just going to say, I don't say that, in, you know, in a negative way, but there is a culture, to be honest. There is a culture, people do things a certain way, people's way of life is, is a certain way. But you're not going to have uh, uh, staff come in and then just because they weren't able to do something the way that you, we need them to be doing it, you know, you're gonna fire people. It doesn't work that way because at the end of the day, you're still going to have to pick from the same pot. You know, you have what red and green apples in a pot, and you're blindfolded. You're you're picking one, and you, maybe you want red apples. You you happen to pick. there are red apples in there, but there are not that many. That's the point. You know, and and sometimes you happen to pick a green apple, and then you you think that you you're going to try and. Uh, you know, train them and change them. If they're ready to, you know, change and, and get with the plan in, in due time, that'll happen. But until then, when, whenever we pick, we pick a red apple, we're, 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 happy, we're happy to have that person in there. You know, so I, I even use this as an opportunity to say to the general public, you know, we're calling on, on everyone, architects, engineers, uh, project managers, uh, uh, you know, uh, general uh, management administrators, anyone out there you know we we want to work with anyone out there and uh, th this project this company is is here for for more than just business you know so uh, as many good people as we can get we'd love to have them in-house will all of the units be constructed at the same time and if so does that mean that clients who made first payments will have to wait until all of these units are sold before construction begins First question or first part of the question, no, all units are not going to be uh, started or constructed at the same time. Second uh, part as well, no. Clients who came first don't have to wait till the entire community is sold out before we start construction. As I said, phase three is starting in a couple of days. Um, by the time that this video would air, you know, it, it, it would have already begun. Um, however, uh, we're going to be building in batches of about 200 units per batch, four batches for the entire community. Um, the roads, things like the roads, um, the amenities, things like that, they will come at the tail end. So yes, clients who came in earlier would have to wait till the end of the entire construction before these amenities would be available. Um, because with things like the roads within the community, we would rather not, you know, construct these roads and have uh, heavy trucks, you know, running uh, them the whole time because there is still uh, ongoing construction. So these things are going to come come at the tail end. But uh, the units that were sold earlier would be, you know, completed before. The rest, and that's why I said we're going to be building in batches of about 200 units per batch. What does the future look like for Sukasa? What are your plans? The future for Sukasa is uh, we're going to keep doing this, um, but we're going to keep doing it better. We're going to make it much bigger. Um, this year we've uh, dubbed it the the year for partnerships. Um, this year we're looking for the best kinds of partnerships there are. We're looking for uh, people that can come on board and, and you know, have an impact, bring something to the table. Um, we're not looking at, at, at being a closed company. We're open and uh, we're welcoming and anyone and everyone as long as they have something to offer because this is a, this is a if I do say so myself, a national uh, uh, thing that uh, national endeavor. If we're talking about two million plus homes, uh, in, in deficit. Um, anyone, not just Sukasa, anyone that is embarking on on a project that solves that kind of problem within this country is is doing uh, uh, um, the entire nation uh, uh, some good, not a favor, because you know whatever we're doing, 
we're doing for ourselves as well. So I don't, we don't consider this a, a favor to anyone. We're doing it for ourselves, and that's why we think that it, you know, absolutely has to be done. You know, anything that you think that you're going to be able to do for yourself and benefit in any way, absolutely, I'm sure that you're going to want to do that. Um, so we don't see it as doing a favor to anyone, and um, we don't think that anyone should see it that way neither. Um, but we're we're asking that people have uh, a little more patience for us. Uh, this year moving forward, what the plans are, are two main things. Uh, we've dubbed it a year of partnerships and also a year of uh, uh, you know, the best customer service. In the previous year, we've had a lot of uh, issues when it comes to the, the service. Truth be told, this is because that was not the number one priority. Not to say that clients were not important. Yet. Without people who believed in what we're doing and bought into our idea, we wouldn't be here, right? Uh, but there were other things that took precedent, and, and we had to, you know, prioritize what, what really was the most important. And this year, the most important thing is to make sure that our customer service goes through the roof. Uh, um, so we're, we're guaranteeing clients that a lot of things will, will change moving forward within this year. And uh, this is proof of that. This is the first time we're doing anything like this. And that's why I'm sitting here with you. The, the whole point of this is to communicate. Um, because when I say customer service, most of the problems that our clients have had, um, whether it's delays in receipts, whether it's delays in the layout, whether it's delays in the construction itself, whatever it is, it's mainly underlined by lack of communication. People are not hearing anything. And they're living, you know, thousands of miles away. And they send their money over, hard-earned money. And um, no one's saying anything to them. This is also not to, you know, shift blame or anything, but I'd like to explain to people why some of these things happen. I think, and I could be wrong, but I think, the Ghanaian culture is, is one that um, does not like confrontation. So we're having staff that do not want to give what they see as bad news. That lack of communication, because they, they don't want to say to the client something that they think that they would have a pushback or backlash because they're putting themselves there first and, and looking at it as this is a client coming at me instead of the client coming at the company. You know, uh, because at, at the end of the day, they're representing the company. Uh, uh, these are some of the problems that we're dealing with. But again, we did not expect this. We knew this going in. And that's why we have uh, been, you know, doing all these trainings and things like that. But again, I do concede and agree that it wasn't the, the, the top priority. But moving forward, we have been able to do exactly what we set out to do in 2022. And we were very focused. You know, whatever we focused on and said we were going to do, we did that. Moving forward, 2023, we're focusing on having the best partnerships out there and making sure that clients are served much, much better. So there is always going to be uh, communication. There wouldn't be uh, confusion and not knowing. Even if it wasn't the best information, clients would know this. People would understand exactly what we're dealing with, exactly what we're going to be doing, instead of um, um, you know definite silence and uh, no information. So that's as far as plans are concerned. That's uh, uh, what what we have. Besides, of course, the, the, as I said, you know, construction is going to continue. Uh, we're going to be unveiling some uh, really beautiful things within this year, uh, other projects that we have coming up. Um, all these things are, are, in the, are in the works, but top priorities are to make sure that clients are satisfied. And to do that, I think that the number one way is to communicate, good or bad. You know, we take the good with the bad. So. That's uh, what we would like to let people know, you know, as far as plans moving forward. Right. Thank you very much for spending time with us, Mr. Granson. And You're so we welcome. see you again. Thank you, too, for uh, spending time with me and, uh, you know, helping us do this.
and um, to the general public people watching us. Uh, we really do appreciate all of the, the love, the support, the, you know, the advice. A lot of advice coming in from a lot of people. You know, people like to give a lot of advice. So um, we take it all in uh, uh, and then we, we try as much as possible to, to give the best. And so thank you to everyone, yourself and uh, the entire crew, entire team here as well. Thank you. You're welcome. You've been gone in